Hello again, it me. It's another video. I said I didn't know when I was gonna make another video, but recovering at home and like kind of wanting to get back to work means that I'm on top of my emails and I'm gonna make videos. So there's that. I don't quite have the mental brain power to do videos that involve research and scripting. So we're gonna do a Q&A. We're also doing a Q&A because you guys have a lot of questions. Thank you so much for all of your love and support. There are lots and lots of questions and I want to answer as many of them as possible. So this is probably going to be another hella long video. So just gonna get into it. I asked on Twitter for your questions using hashtag Ask Hannah. Let's do this. Emily asked any books or films you're highly anticipating this year. I still need to watch most of the like Oscar BAFTA nommed films. I do feel up for going to cinema if I Uber there and back. I'm very excited about seeing Lady Bird and I'm also really excited for Black Panther. In terms of books, I am super excited for The Surface Breaks, which is Louise O'Neill's feminist retelling of The Little Mermaid. And also my friend Holly Bourne, her debut adult novel is coming out this year. It's called How Do You Like Me Now? And I'm very excited to read that. Naomi asked, how on earth does a stoma work? As a non-medical professional, I'm going to try and answer this the best I can. Basically, the stoma is the end of my small intestine. People who have a colon, your small intestine is attached to your large intestine, which is attached to your rectum, and then poo comes out. I don't have a large intestine, so the end of my small intestine sticks out of my stomach. It is bright red and kind of moist and fleshy. Basically, all of my food waste goes through my small intestine and then comes out the stoma. That's how it works. Nicole asks, how often does your stoma need changing? At the moment, I'm changing my stoma bag every other day, but once I have my stitches out and the bit where the skin attaches to the stoma, once that's all healed, I feel like I might be able to do it like every three days. That's like changing the whole bag, but in terms of emptying it, they say you have to empty it like four to six times a day. I haven't really been counting how often I've been doing it, but I do have to set an alarm in the middle of the night for like three, four in the morning because I have to empty it in the night as well. Naturally, there were a lot of questions about sex. How that works and also how a stoma works with potential pregnancy and things like that. In theory, having a stoma makes no difference. The only thing that I'm anticipating would be weird is the fact that the top half of the bag is like stuck with stickiness to my tummy, but then the bottom half of the bag is like flappy. You can like fold it up and Velcro it up to make it smaller, which I think is a thing that people would do for sexy times. Also, you can get things online. They're kind of like binders, but they go around your tummy. So it basically just holds the bag down. And I guess that just stops it flapping around. In terms of pregnancy, I read that there is like some small amount of evidence that it can affect your fertility, but generally doesn't. The only thing that they say is quite likely is that I would have to opt in for a cesarean. Are there any activities or sports that you won't be able to do now with a stoma? Obviously right now I can't do any of them, but once I'm fully recovered, there is nothing really stopping me from just living the same life that I lived before. Actually, in terms of exercise, it is especially important that I do lots of core exercises. The fact that there is some of my insides on the outside, that is a weakness. It means that I am at a higher risk of getting things like hernias. In order to avoid hernias, you want a strong core. Jenna asks, do I miss pooing. Weirdly, I'm kind of indifferent. When I was in hospital, I was having like phantom needing to poo, needing to fart out my bum feelings. I haven't had them since I've been home. Jim asked, does this mean I don't have colitis now? I'm not sure about the technicality, but in theory, no colon, no colitis. Colitis is only in your large intestine and I had my whole large intestine removed. In a similar vein, Samantha asked, is it possible to get another flare up? If you did, would that mean it was then Crohn's rather than UC? If I did get another flare up anywhere between my throat and my small intestine, yes, that could mean it was Crohn's, but the histology report and all of the tests and stuff that they did on my colon showed that it was ulcerative colitis and not Crohn's. But one thing that they said can happen is that I can still get inflammation in my rectum. If I do, then there's treatment. Lots of you guys were asking about food and 
drink. Katie and Zoe asked about any foods that I'm craving or that I'm going to miss that I can't eat for a while with the stoma. And also, can I eat chocolate yet? Yes, I can eat chocolate, but I can't have chocolate that's got fruit and nuts in it. But I never liked that anyway. If this was to happen to anyone, it's good that it happened to me because this is kind of my ideal diet and I don't miss vegetables. What I do miss is like the kinds of foods that I can't eat because they have those vegetables in them. I would love to be able to have like fajitas, but I would have to like take the peppers out and I wouldn't be able to have lettuce. It's just not as exciting. Megan asked, was there any particular food you craved super bad but couldn't have whilst I was in hospital? Whilst I was in hospital and I wasn't allowed to eat, but mentally I had this huge appetite, I made a list of all of the foods I wanted to eat. Burgers, and in brackets it says Five Guys, Shake Shack and Byron. I still haven't had any of them. I wrote down cheese and onion crisps, jammy dodgers, Oaxaca, I want chips and salsa, Wagamama, loaded fries, so basically chips with cheese and bacon. And then penguin chocolate bar. We've got penguin chocolate bars in the house. I've eaten many of them. I love them. Maria asks, can you still drink? I can still drink, but I haven't because I'm too scared. And also I don't really feel like it. The thing about alcohol, your large intestine is where you absorb water from. So I have to be really careful about not getting dehydrated and alcohol dehydrates you a lot. I just have to be super careful when I'm drinking to make sure that I'm getting enough water as well. Also, I should probably avoid beer and fizzy fizzy drinks because of the gas and the wind and it blowing up the bag. Maybe I'm gonna become a wine drinker. And then the other reason reason why I'm a bit too scared to drink right now is because I am extremely underweight and I haven't drunk anything in about two months. So if I have just like one glass of wine, I'll probably be pissed. Daisy asks, can I have baths or go swimming? I can't right now because I can't submerge myself in water whilst the wound is healing. But once I'm fully recovered, then yes, I can have baths and I can go swimming. The stoma bags are waterproof, but also you can get covers for them. Before you were fully set on getting your colon removed, what was your biggest worry about life with the stoma? It's hard to say. I think the main thing that I was worried about or not looking forward to, and now having experienced it, I'm like, yeah, that's frustrating, is the having to get up in the middle of the night every night to empty the bag. A few nights now, I've naturally woken up before my alarm's gone off, but it's still just frustrating because you have to get out of bed. Of all of the things, that to be the one thing that I'm frustrated at, it's kind of like low stakes. Abby asks, any more book recommendations? I haven't been reading, but uh, I will recommend February's Banging Book Club book, She of the Mountains by Vivek Schreier. I think it's kind of like a poetry book. In the beginning, there is no he, there is no she. Two cells make up one cell. This is the mathematics behind creation. One plus one makes one. Life begets life. We are the period to a sentence, the effect to a cause, always belonging to someone. We are never our own. This is why we are so lonely. Wow! Poetry doesn't agree with me, so we'll see how I fare with this. I'm actually gonna read along this month. Sorry, I missed last month. So also had a bunch of questions about farts and wind and how that works. So yes, I fart out my stoma. She does make a noise. This is one of the reasons why I called her Mona because at the beginning she was loud but now it's more like I might be the only person that can hear it I don't know but it's like a I can kind of feel it sometimes but if I do get gassy the stoma bag fills with air and kind of blows up a bit like a balloon and you have to like burp the bag but usually I just do that when I empty it but I don't fart out my bum the other thing about farting is that when you fart out your bum you can feel it coming along and you can try and like stop yourself from farting like if you're in public out the stoma I have zero control she'll just do her thing I have no say in the matter Alex asks how have you managed to keep your self-confidence up and stay so positive during the these times. I don't know. But also I haven't been super positive the whole time. I've been mostly positive post-surgery. Pre-surgery was a horrific time and I was too ill to either be positive or negative. Like I see that period as like a period of depression where like all of the emotions are just squashed. Post-surgery for me it has been relatively easy to be positive and everything since surgery has just been little improvements. Naturally I'm just like this is better than being ill so I'm positive about this 
experience. And then also I'm very lucky that I'm naturally quite a confident person anyway. I think I'm just so happy because I'm just not ill anymore. Sammy asked, are you still considering going into higher education? Uh, yes. So before all of this happened, I was thinking about doing a master's in gender and sexuality, something around that area. And actually I was planning over Christmas to start my applications. In theory, I would still like to start one this year, September 2018, but there is big work projects that I would have to finish first. And obviously now because of being ill in surgery, I'm kind of two months behind. So we'll see. I think I can do it, but I also want to manage my expectations. <laughs> Speaking of big work projects, a lot of you asked if I'm writing another book. Not right now, but I'm planning on it and I do have an idea of what it's going to be, but I'm not gonna tell you. Carolina asks, have you ever thought about writing a novel? Yes, I attempted NaNoWriMo last year. I failed at that, but it was good fun. Writing a novel is hard, but that was good practice. Did you and Dan move into your flat yet? No, not yet and thank god because i would not be able to lift things we are going to be moving around the end of march so i should be well enough to build ikea furniture by then which i'm very excited about so because in the last video i mentioned that i didn't get to celebrate christmas and new year's a few of you asked when I'm gonna celebrate them and i have a plan so because we're moving into the flat end of march it will probably take us a while to fully furnish the whole place but once it's done we'll have a big housewarming party and i'm thinking about making the housewarming party christmas and new year's themed because why not how do you know when you need to go for a number two is it still the same it is not the same at all i never feel like i need to go for a poo mona just empties herself and i can't really feel it and then i will be like oh the bag's kind of full or i'll be like i need a wee and then whilst i'm weeing i'll be like might as well empty it whilst i'm here but no i never feel like i need a poo amy asked how how do you deal with the unpredictability, impending doom, yeah, of UC? Struggling with this aspect even after three years. That's a weird one because before this flare up, I had been symptomless for 10 years. My last flare up was when I was 15. And so for 10 years, I've just been a healthy person who takes medication and every six months goes to the hospital for an outpatient's appointment and goes, yep, I'm feeling great. So because it'd been so long, I never worried about it. It just was so in the back of my head, like I never even thought about the fact that I could potentially get ill again. It was just so not even on my radar. But whilst I was ill and we started having the first conversations about surgery, one of the things that we were weighing up was why not just bite the bullet and have surgery? Because even if the medication works and I get better, I then might just be living with all of this anxiety and dread about when the next flare up is going to be. Will it be another 10 years or will it be 10 months or one year or will it be 20 years? I guess it depends like how your UC affects you, like how often you have flare ups and things like that. I feel like a weight off my shoulders and I feel so good that I'm like, oh, I don't have to worry about having a flare up. And once I've finished all of the meds that I'm currently on for post-surgery, I'm like not gonna be on any medication anymore. That's insane to me. I thought I was gonna be on medication for the rest of my life. Okay, there's been a bunch of questions about the coil and periods. So gonna talk about this for a bit. First of all, people have been asking how I've dealt with having periods in hospital or if my flare up affected my menstrual cycle. When I was a teenager, every time I had a flare up, my periods would stop. It was like my body just couldn't deal. And the same thing has happened again. But for the first month after having the coil, I was spotting every day. And then basically the spotting stopped. And one of the side effects of the marina coil is lighter periods or just no periods at all. So probably a mixture of the two. I'm very happy that I've not been having periods because oh my God, having to deal with that in hospital at the same time, horrendous, no thank you. I'm not really expecting my periods to come back because I'm assuming that part of that is also to do with having the coil in. And then the other questions that have come up about the coil was, do I think that the coil may have caused my flare up? Yes, I do think that, but I can't say for sure because I asked all the doctors, apparently there is no evidence to say that 
the marina coil, hormones, contraception, having something put into your uterus would cause a flare up of ulcerative colitis. Getting the coil and that causing a flare up is the best answer I have to why I flared up for the first time after 10 years, but there is no medical scientific evidence that that is true. So what are you gonna do? I've also had a bunch of questions about body image and body positivity in relation to having the stoma and the stoma bag, but also having lost weight. In terms of the stoma, it's hard because it looks weird. Like it's just strange, but I know being proud of it and very actively kind of like showing it off is gonna help me and hopefully help other people as well. I definitely see it as that like fake it until you make it thing. If I post pictures of me and the stoma bag and shout about how I still love my body, then I know that I will be. And I do feel that way. Like I do feel good about it, but I still recognize that it's like different and gonna take some getting used to. In terms of the weight loss, I really don't like how my body looks right now, but it's unhealthy. It's not a healthy body. For me, I want to get in a place with my body where my body is healthy and strong and fit and mobile and works again. I don't particularly care what it looks like, whether I'm the same size as I was before, a bit heavier, a bit lighter. I'm trying to be as body positive as I can in here and then also publicly. But as you can imagine, there's going to be a and downs. Craig asks, is your stoma a permanent thing? Mine is technically not permanent, which means that I can get it reversed if I want to. That would involve another surgery called pouch surgery, where they reconnect your small intestine to your rectum and create a pouch inside. And then it means that I would poo out my bum again. I am in absolutely no rush to have surgery again. There is no rush for me to decide whether or not I want that surgery. I could decide by the end of this year that I want it reversed, I could decide that I want the stoma for the rest of my life. For now, I'm just gonna live life with a stoma and see how that suits me. And finally, I had a bunch of questions about what I'm most looking forward to in 2018 and my goals. Main thing I'm looking forward to, moving into the flat that I bought. <gasps> I'm so excited about that. There's gonna be a room that is an office and we're gonna play lots of video games and start streaming on Twitch and it's gonna be really great. In terms of goals, new goal, fully recover, at least write the first draft manuscript. And then the master's thing, am I gonna do that this year? Cause I'm also gonna do it part-time, which means it'll take me two years. So ideally I would like to start this year. Oh, I'm also looking forward to my birthday, which is very soon, 19th of February, by the way. On that happy note, I'm going to end this very long, Q and A. Thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I would love to hear in the comments if me talking about this stuff is the first time you've ever encountered stomas before and you're learning this all new, or if there are people in your life or someone in your life that has one and you already know about it. Also, are you someone with one? Don't forget to subscribe because again, who knows when my next video will be. Maybe it'll be next week because I've just got lots of time at home to film. If you do want more stoma related videos, let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you'd be interested in seeing. Maybe I'll do a what's in my stoma bag. It's just poo. Great. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>